Why is cleaning and sanitizing important for cold storage rooms? A dirty cold storage room becomes a problem when bacterial communities in the form of biofilms are able to grow and adversely affect produce. These communities include foodborne pathogens like Listeria, a cold-loving pathogen, and microorganisms that can spoil your produce. Even if your product is in a clean bin, microbes from dirty walls, floors, and shelves can contact your product through drips, splashes, and dust movement. Maintaining, cleaning, and sanitizing your cold storage area can effectively reduce the risk of microbial contamination and maintain the quality of your product during storage. This video will discuss effective cleaning and sanitizing strategies for your cold storage area, as well as how to incorporate this process into your operation schedule. Incorporating maintenance activities into your cleaning and sanitizing routine will support the integrity of your cold storage area. This can include general housekeeping, removing standing water, checking the condenser and drip pans are working, checking temperature regularly, and calibrating your thermometer. You should inspect equipment periodically to determine if there is a need for repair, cleaning, or replacement. Zones of interest for this video. Looking around the cold storage area, let's assess what sanitary zone each surface falls under. This cooler has floors, ceilings, walls, door handles, racks for holding produce, and a condenser. The racks are either zone 1 or 2, depending if they hold produce in completely enclosed boxes or not. Doorknobs are zone 2. Worker hands, which may touch produce, are also likely to touch the door handle. The condenser may be zone 2 or 3, depending if water can drip onto produce bins or not. The floors, walls, and ceilings are zone 3. As a reminder, under the produce safety rule, a cleaning and sanitizing schedule must be constructed for any areas determined as zone 1. This may not look like your cold storage room. Your cold storage may be missing some of these components or may have other equipment not seen here. It's important to evaluate your own equipment to determine what type of cleaning and sanitizing procedure is right for your operation. Cleaning and Sanitizing Strategy Steps for cleaning. Prepare the area to be cleaned. Remove all produce. Clear all surfaces of visible debris by sweeping or using a high pressure hose. Do not direct hoses towards condensers, drip pans, or floor drains, as these sites are known to harbor listeria. Hose spray may facilitate dispersal of this organism from zone three surfaces to zones two and one. Clean the area with appropriate detergent. Use detergent to remove caked on debris, soil, and grease using a brush or other physical tool. This can also aid in removing biofilms. If you are sanitizing any surfaces, you must first clean the surface before proceeding with sanitizing steps, since organic material like dirt and grease will interfere with the sanitizer's ability to kill microbes. The detergent you choose will be based on the nature of the soils and the types of surfaces you are cleaning. Be sure to consult the label to find the appropriate concentration and contact time for your cleaner. For example, this detergent needs a contact time of at least one minute to break up soils before scrubbing. Also be sure to rinse the surface with potable water after scrubbing. Please consult a food safety educator regulator, or supplier to determine the right detergent for your equipment. Verify that cleaning has occurred. Visual inspection can be used to verify that soils have been removed before proceeding. Sanitize the area with appropriate sanitizer. If any areas in your cold storage room are zone one areas, or if you are choosing to add a sanitizing step to other zones, apply the appropriate concentration of sanitizer after you've rinsed your cleaner. Rinsing prior to applying sanitizer is important because some sanitizers will not work in the presence of detergents. 
As with cleaners, your sanitizer depends on the type of soil your operation compiles and the surface you are sanitizing. Always follow the directions on the label for mixing, checking the concentration, and applying sanitizer. You will also find directions indicating if a final water rinse is required after sanitizer application. In all circumstances, allow the surface to air dry before use. Documentation Establish a record for each cleaning and sanitizing event that includes the date of the event and the method you use to clean and sanitize. Templates of these records are available here. The cleaning and sanitizing record for the produce safety rule must include farm name, complete address, and must be signed and dated by a supervisor. Keep these records for two years past the date of the last entry. Incorporate cleaning and sanitizing procedures in your regular operation schedule. How often you clean your storage room should be based on individual circumstances, keeping in mind harvests and operational timelines. Beyond regular cleaning and sanitizing routines, it is recommended cold storage areas undergo a deep clean at the beginning of a season and when an event occurs that compromises the cleanliness of the area to prevent unwanted microbial growth. A deep clean involves breaking down equipment for targeted cleaning, as well as including all zones, not just food contact surfaces, in your sanitizing step. You can count any deep clean as a clean break for your cold storage room. Having an efficient and effective cleaning and sanitizing routine for your cold storage area will not only help you minimize food safety risk, but also help extend the shelf life of your produce. Remember, in addition to cleaning and sanitizing routines, worker training and good housekeeping practices can also support your operation's sanitation program and extend the life of your cold storage unit. All links provided throughout the video will be included in the description. If you have any questions about this video or the produce safety rule, please contact your local extension agent or produce safety specialists at the University of Maryland.